There has been a lot of comment recently about de-dollarization. The idea that the United States dollar is losing its significance and that the Chinese renminbi will, you know, take over. I mean, I sort of think that the reports of the death of the dollar are exaggerated. I think that if you look at, um, I mean, I think the closest example about the significance of a currency would be if you take, for example, a pound sterling um, at a time when the British Empire dominated the world, that, you know, and you look at other examples as well, these things, immediate collapse doesn't tend to happen. Now, you can, especially when you're talking about currencies. Now, someone may say, well, what about the, um, you know, the Soviet Union? Well, that's about the collapse of a country rather than the collapse of, um, of a currency. And I would make the general point that in relation to the collapse of empires, the, 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 the reasons, you know, later on when historians look at it, the reasons for the collapse are things that um, happened you know, years before that effectively feed into the system, which caused the system to um, to collapse. The so it, it's not a it's not like one event that's that's happened that collapsed it. It tends to be things that happened before, or if certain things happen, like say for example, the Austro-Hungarian Empire had malaise had set in and and getting engaged in the First World War had the effect. Of um, by initiating the war that it couldn't win, um, it really wasn't prepared for it. That in a sense, what you ended up doing was bring forward its collapse. But this is not intended as a history lesson. It's merely to um, explain why I think that the U.S. dollar is not in any way close to uh, collapsing. Now, the issue about any currency, and it's always and money has always fascinated me in the sense that. You had an earlier time, I'm going into history again, where people, it was you batter for stuff, you know, and you exchange things based on an assessment of their value. And then you had a currency that was backed by gold, for example, and now no longer, you know, you're no longer backed by gold. You had something solid behind it. Now what we have is a system whereby it's about, you know, somebody presses the printing press and you print a lot of paper and it, it's there and people accept it. And the acceptance of it is really what makes the currency powerful. That people are prepared to accept it and use it and able to exchange it with somebody else. Now, for the um, dollar to lose the dominance that it has, I mean, it will, I, would, I, I would say that the, the dominance would keep being reduced over time. But for it to lose its dominance over time is the extent to which it is needed for activities that go on. You know, it's about need. One is more valuable than the other. And one of the things that's always struck me, um, it's quite interesting, is that, and I, I will take countries at random, is that two countries deal with each other and then you decide, say for example, uh, Vietnam is doing a deal with, let's say, Senegal you would use the dollar ideally as the currency that people would, they would do the trade, try to get the local currency, exchange it to dollar, paying dollars. And then, you know, that's what would happen because you could use dollars in a sense accepted, you know, everywhere. And, you know, in some ways over the period of time, you know, the euro has gained a significance as a currency that's quite used because, you know, a lot of people are using it. There are lots of countries involved and so on. So really, I would say that the, the, the dollar will still be significant. It will not just collapse. But one of the things, as I said, that's always struck me is about why countries that are close together, next door to each other, insist on having the dollar as their currency or using the dollar. You know, it's always struck me when countries have also gone down the path of borrowing using someone else's paper. <laughs> you know, it's, uh, I mean, there are reasons for that, but... Um, and I have my own view as to how you think I think you need to order uh, things and I think Chinese as an example so in a sense what's happened is that you have the the core countries are part of the collective West who will certainly um, you know 
be continued to trade with America in a particular way. And you can see that when America chooses not to trade with somebody, it's basically as a result of sanctions imposing the restrictions. So for example, if you take um, Cuba as an example, a more recent invasion to Russia, it's about the limits that you choose to put yourself in place in relation to that. Now, the thing about human beings that I would say distinguishes us from other species, it's really our ability to innovate and find new ways to deal with things. Now, it seems to me that the dollar will still be used, but and the value of the dollar will be what people will, will when they're doing this exchange, it will refer, you know, reference in terms of trying to decide what the value should be when they decide to exchange, um, you know, their use their currencies. But when somebody takes someone else's currency, they have to be able to use it. Taking, for example, the North Korean currency, if you do a trade with them, the only place you can use that currency is in North Korea. So unless you're buying something from North Korea, something quite significant, then really you don't need their currency. But um, it seems to me that what you'll happen is that whatever uh, difference that will exist, it may well be that the payment has to be made, it'll be made in dollars or euros or, you know, or something else. And I would say that the, um, it's clear that they're, they're with the rise of BRICS and 19 countries seeking to join some explicitly saying so and others having um, you know, expressed their wish um, in direct and indirect ways, um, with the issue would be whether or not out of the BRICS system that a currency emerges that those countries will be prepared to use because it would mean that other countries who want to deal with those countries will feel that they have to get um, whatever BRICS currency that exists. You, and, and the Chinese uh, uh, renminbi is not a currency that the, the Chinese government keeps, or the bank, central bank, keeps a tight control over the currency and its use overseas. So it's clearly not in a position where it can be used. They're not prepared to allow, you know, billions, uh, trillions of their currency to be outside of their system, not interested in that at all. So unless you create a BRICS currency or something else, you know, what you would happen is that it, it's, it's, I don't see how you're going to replace the dollar because you have to replace it with something. So the use of the dollar would be less because other people will trade in it, in their currency that is with reference to the dollar, but not actually using the dollar. And the other thing is that they may find different ways, um, you know, that they would be able to do their trade um, that would mean that surpluses maybe can exist from one to the other and depends on how you choose to cash it in and that's what likely to happen. But the reality is that the dollar is trusted in many places and you can just pick countries around the world, especially in the developing world, the, the dollar is trusted as a stable currency. You go to the Philippines, you take out the dollar, you're fine. I went to, um, you know, Jordan, um, you know, last year, um, took out the pound sterling, no thank you. Dollar, euro, yes. The fact of the matter is that, it, you know, the many countries you pull out the dollar, the dollar is king. It's a dominant currency and people trust it. They feel if they put their money in the dollar, that their local currency is not as strong and that will provide a, a sort of a, a hedge against inflation, uh, um, especially in places where the economy is not strong or the economy has been run quite badly. So, I think that those who are announcing that the dollar is dead or whatever else are really just being dramatic and being unrealistic. I think the dollar is under threat, but I think the threat is based on what the uh, USA does in terms of the, the dollar, whereby you have criminal offenses regardless of where they take place. It's extraterritorial effect whereby um, you can have a deal because it involves the US dollar you can never venture to the United States and you've committed a crime and wherever you are, they can ask for you. And very few, few countries are going to resist when the Americans ask for you, you know, they will hand you over. <laughs> and, that's, and that's the reality of, you know, of, of what it is. So um, I think it will be interesting watching things go forward. And I think that when we come to the BRICS summit in August, I'm particularly curious to see what comes out of that because there have been a number of working parties looking at the issue about currency and it depends on what they come out with but if there's anything you think about the way you know the chinese and the indians uh deal with these things 
it's really um, step by step to make sure that things are done properly. I don't see there would be a rush to get, um, you know, you know, to do it in that particular way to, to, in, to have a new currency. And we can see that with the new, uh, with the BRICS Bank, for example, they have uh, said that I think it's 20 or 30% of their lending, their aim, at least 20 or 30% of lending to a country will be done in local currencies. I'm not clear about whether it's local currency or the country they're lending to or whether or not it's one of the BRICS um, currency or the currency of the countries that are part of the BRICS Bank because brings back mem BRICS <laughs> Bank membership is actually wider than the BRICS itself. So um, that's all I have to say. That's it.